Hello, my name is Nicholas Bira, and I'm a member of the 3D Print Club at Mizzou. Today I'm going to be going over how to use the Edit tab in Mesh Mixer and showing you some of the things that that allows you to do with your 3D models. Today I'm going to be going over the edit tab and some of the different tools you can find within there to edit your mesh and make it more dynamic than you can accomplish with just sculpting. So open up the edit tab and you have all these different options for different tools. The main tool I'm going to be going over right at the beginning is the mirror tool. Mirroring allows you to effectively duplicate or mirror part of your mesh across a plane of interest. When I click on the tool, it defaults to this mirroring plane in the X direction, I believe. Uh, but I want to change that so that we can actually mirror across the Y direction. As I rotate this, you'll see that it changes and shows what the, the type of resulting mesh being mirrored is going to look like. And if I move the plane of mirroring forward and backward, you can see how that changes the overall result. Initially, the bunny we started out with was not symmetrical because one part, one side of its head is looking in one direction. If I move the plane of mirroring all the way over here, it will essentially just duplicate a mirrored version of the original. But if I move the plane of mirroring into the object itself, you have this duplication and combination of the two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it close together and try and make the rabbit symmetrical to what it would originally be if it was mirrored right down the middle. So I'll press accept and now I have a single mesh with two faces essentially and a symmetrical body. Next I'm going to go down to the duplicate tab which as you might expect just makes a duplicate of the same model. We have the object browser here which is where you have multiple objects within your single uh, viewing window. If I click on the bunny, the original.obj, it, it highlights this one. And if I click on the other one, which is the copy, uh, it highlights that. You can't quite see it because it's underneath the original. If I go to the transform tab, which is the third one down, this allows you to select and move and rotate and scale different objects within your model. So here you can see I move the copy out from underneath the original, and now I have two duplicates of the same thing. I'm going to go into transform again and use a couple of these different tools. You can rotate your object using the, the grasping bar there. You can displace your object using the different um, arrows and rotational handles. Or you can also scale your object using the squares in each direction along the axes of interest. And if you want to scale uniformly, you can click on the white triangle or white cube in the center and scale it uniformly. I'm going to scale it down a little bit smaller than the other one and at the end of all of that I'll press accept. Going back into transform again you can also also accomplish all of these things by pressing the or typing in your translation rotation or scaling factors into these dialog boxes. That's also very handy if you want to align certain objects to combine them for later modeling. So I'm going to take my duplication rabbit here, move it over to on top of this part of the, the first model and sort of locate it on top like that. So I'll press accept again and it'll stay there. So now I have a small duplicated scale down rabbit sitting on top of my original model. But there's still two separate models so I can transform and edit them individually. So I'm gonna skip over a line pivot and create pivot. Both are useful for getting models to line up just the way you want them to or to rotate them in a different manner than the default transform rotation. But I'm going to go down to plane cut, which is very useful for cleaning up your models. So plane cut does essentially what it says it will. It cuts through your model at a certain plane, which you can define during the process. So here I'm going to move this plane up a little bit past the beginning, the bottom where it was, and then press accept and what this will do is it'll cut through my model 
slice very cleanly through all the triangles and make a nice clean cut at the bottom. Uh, if I wanted to undo that, Control-Z, I can change that angle, change that plane cut direction and accept something like that and cleanly cut all the way through my model at that angle. Like I said, this is very useful for properly cleaning up models that have a lot of messy edges or if you want something clean on the bottom to allow you to finish up and fill in the holes and have something flat for it to rest on and when you 3D print something, that's an ideal way to do that. So going on further, closed cracks works for small gaps in your model, but I prefer to use analysis and inspector. If you go down to the analysis tab, under the edit tab, inspector is the top option. An inspector just essentially looks at your model is it, and is able to determine if there are holes facing outwards or any other tiny little errors that might give a problem later on. So you can either click on the blue tab right here, which will automatically fill in this hole the best it can, making your object a solid, or you can do auto repair all, which does essentially the same thing and will address any issues with the model. At the end of it all, you can press done, and then that'll leave your model cleanly filled in and ready for 3D printing. So now I'm going to go down to make a solid. Make a solid allows you to, if you have holes or if you have multiple objects that you're trying to combine together, it essentially recomputes everything about the model and tries its best to close up holes, um, clean up the mesh, and generally make it a solid object for 3D printing. Before I used Inspector to clean up some holes, which is useful and does a good job of being clean. However, if, if your model is very complicated or if there's areas that are just too, too complicated to try and clean up with, automatically clean up with detect holes and things like that, you can use the other tool to find areas that need the make solid tool to find areas that just don't work. So here I've deleted several chunks of my model to show, kind of simulate what a nasty model with lots of different problems might, might turn out to be. And if you've combined different meshes that didn't come together cleanly, you might have some, some bad alignments or things like this. So going back to the edit tab, I'll use the make solid tool. And what it does is it goes through and recomputes the entire model, essentially filling in any holes it can find and cleaning up any problems. There's a lot of different options here. Mainly Blocky does, if you choose Blocky and update, it essentially recomputes the model as if it were a Minecraft model and gives you all these small polygons. Uh, not many uses for this besides just a appearance, aesthetic kind of look. I prefer faster accurate. If I do accurate and update, it does a much better job of, of recomputing the model generally, but it's a much more high density model and it takes longer for your computer to process. If you have an object with sharp edges, such as a cube or something like that, the sharp edge preserve function is pretty useful because it'll try its best to maintain the, the rough edges or sharp edges in a polygonal model, whereas an accurate or fast, it'll do its best to include smoothed edges. So if I use the sharp edge preserve, you might be able to see a lot of the triangles are much better preserved and the edges of this hole are much more clearly defined than if I were to go with accurate or fast. Also, solid accuracy, if you increase this slider, it'll take longer, but it'll make the model a little bit better. Mesh density, if you increase this slider, it will also result in a better looking model, but a much more high density model and with a much larger file size. Both of these will increase the amount of time it takes for your computer to, to process and might end up crashing the computer if it's too much. So I'll press accept. And now down in my object, object browser, it has made a third object, which is a updated version of the previous two. I can turn on and off viewing with this eyeball. And if I turn on all three, you get some bad overlapping, which is un undesirable. Um, going back, it just shows the original model with the object bunny. I can turn that off and just turn on the most recent one, which is what I'm looking at now with the updated components. The last thing I'm gonna go over today is the hollow function which allows you to choose your model and hollow it out on the inside within a certain thickness of the walls. So I clicked on it with my desired model selected. And here it's sort of, it's showing a smaller interior size of my current model, uh, depicting what the interior will look like if it's hollowed out. I can set the offset distance in this top slider. I'm going to move it up to 
3.33 millimeters and I'll update that and that will recompute the interior hollow making it smaller. I can also choose the amount of holes that I want to access the interior of my hollowed out model if I choose to do that. Here you can see when it recomputed the interior is smaller than it was before. The thickness of the wall is 3.3 millimeters to the interior of the model. So if I do generate holes, it audibly auto places these two holes down here, but I can readjust them as needed and make the holes wider or smaller as I choose up to three millimeters to make this entire model accessible on the interior. So I press accept, it will recompute all of that and generate the new model, which is now fully enclosed. It's a solid object. The inside has been hollowed out with, their, with two holes allowing me to access the inside. This is really useful for making something like a teapot, for example, where you have your exterior model, but you realize that it's all solid and there's nothing on the inside. And you can use this tool to hollow out the inside of your model and put a hole in the top and the spout, allowing you to access the interior and have a fully, while still having a fully enclosed 3D model. So that's all for today. I hope this was informative, and if you enjoyed this video, please keep watching the rest of our series or watch any of our previous videos if this is your first time joining us. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching this video by 3D Printing Club. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like or a comment. Be sure to subscribe or check out one of our other videos. Thanks!